Hi guys, welcome to Make 2 and this review of LEGO Set 21103, The DeLorean Time Machine. This was a LEGO idea set and it is of course from the Back to the Future series. It was released in 2013 and came with 401 pieces. It also came with two minifigures, Dr. Emmett Brown and Marty McFly. Unfortunately, I've built this set from parts that I've scraped together, bought and had already, and I have not been able to get the minifigures. But just to show you that it can be done, you can fit a minifigure inside the little driving space in here. And so here we have Spider-Man in lieu of Marty McFly. Okay, let's get on with the actual tour of the build. First, let's take a look at the cab area. These do rotate outwards like this. Now, that's not actually a feature. You never want it to look like this, but the doors also rotate up. Take a slightly closer look at that in a minute. And you really do need to move this in order to squeeze your minifig in there. There's, you can see there's two studs there for getting the minifig in, but it is just a bit of a tight squeeze. Let's put this back. This door's really, I mean, look at that. It just fits absolutely perfectly. There's a very slight gap there between that cheese slope and the upside down slope, but it just works super well. We've got the wing mirror assembly here with this cheese slope, this special plate, and then a, a tile there. It's just connected by two hinges, um, one here, one here. You obviously could rotate this however you like, but of course it's meant to just fold right down in there and you have exactly the same on the other side. So that is one of the top highlights for me of the set. Moving on around, you've of course it's got four wheels which do let it move backwards and forwards. It wouldn't really be a car if you couldn't do that. Some nice greebling effect with these hoses. I think in the actual movie they kind of snake all the way around, but you look at this and I think probably just for these alone and, and these big exhausts at the back, people would automatically recognise it as being from Back to the Future. Taking a look at the back, I apologise for these two slightly miscoloured pieces, but this uses a whole bunch of studs on the sides and tiles, some hinge pieces, some slope pieces, to make these huge exhaust engines that uh, are, are really emblematic of the movie. I think they've done this really well, this whole back assembly, where you have the headlamps, the bumper, and this, which I have managed to get a hold of, though it's pretty expensive, the customized number plate out of time, which was the actual number plate they had uh, on the vehicle in the movie, so that's pretty cool. And you can see the exhausts down here. I think this is just all really nicely done and, and textured. And actually, for the entire build, there's not really very many special parts at all. There's some printed pieces, sure. There's no weird elements, no big plates, it's all kind of standard elements that you could get from almost any collection, which is why I could relatively easily put it together. Now that comes with pluses and minuses, but it does mean that you kind of, as you're building, you think, wow, this is actually, you're just using normal parts and you're creating these amazing shapes. And actually the base, which is just made, you can kind of see it under there. This is the base of it, just two 16 by two plates. And from there, you just build with a whole load of plates. So this is actually a really solid car. Uh, far more solid than you expect for a car this size. But I think, yeah, just another example of just how carefully every piece was put into this model, which I, I really do respect. Here you've got a, a great view from the front. You can see the bumper here, the headlights, and again, just some more greebling with these here. I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to represent. Now, from this side, you can see the profile now, DeLoreans had incredibly straight, flat bonnets and then very, very angled windows. Of course, we've talked about the doors here. And they've you know, got angles back here that they've captured really nicely. This is a letdown for me. It's a real shame they couldn't have... Maybe this is a, pay, a one of the places to use for a, a special slope piece. There's a reason they didn't, and we will get to that in a minute. But I think it does... It makes the whole thing feel blocky. Uh, which is obviously it is Lego, but I feel that these days they're making things that have as much definition in all of this section here, but still able to get slightly closer to real world shapes. So I think that's why you look at these things, well, this is really cool, but it does look a little strange. And I, I think that's true. It does. Okay. Let's move on to 
seeing the other features, there are a whole bunch that really do elevate this from just being a normal car. So right now we have the car, the DeLorean, as it was in Back to the Future Part 1. And here it is in its mode ready for the end of Part 1 and most of Back to the Future Part 2. It's been converted from the standard road driving DeLorean to a flying car DeLorean from the future. So each of these wheels just rotates upwards. A very clever little assembly in there, just sort of four identical builds using a few Technic pieces, relatively new at the time of it being made, and then just they're just packed in on each side to make sure they don't move. So you can move each of the wheels to this flying position. On the bottom, they give you, or I had to get, these transparent pieces just to give it a solid base. And then as you move around, the other impressive piece is this, which is the Mr. Fusion, uh, nuclear fusion thing where you can put just garbage in there and it will turn it into super powerful nuclear fuel that can power the DeLorean to travel through time. There's one more mode to this. We've got Back to the Future 1, Back to the Future 2, and not to give it away, there's also a mode that makes it look more like it did in the movie Back to the Future Part 3. So here we are again, very quickly, back into Back to the Future Part 1. And now it's Back to the Future Part 3. This is the reason, I think, one of the reasons why they have such a flat, straight uh, bonnet section, is so they can add on this plate, which just represents all the new greebling and bits of machinery that Emma Brown made in the Wild West in order to be able to power, make the time machine work, the flux capacitor flux, when it gets 88 miles an hour going along on a railway track. Now all this has done is put on is you take off this piece, you take a 1x4 tile, put that on, and now you're back to how you were before. And you just have this which you build as, as a separate build from just a relative handful of parts and just, yeah, nothing functional here, just all to look look cool and interesting. So that's a really neat way of converting it to whatever bit of the series you prefer the most. So I think that was a really cool touch. Just got one other little thing to show you, and that's a close-up of the special tiles that come with it. Inside... On this panel there should be a flux capacitor, but unfortunately I couldn't get hold of it. So let's just take a look at the two I was able to get hold of. Here they are, we have two 1x2 tiles. The one on the right you've already seen, that's the number plate that goes on the back. There's a barcode number plate in orange and silver that I couldn't get hold of, that it represents the number plate they had in the future for Back to the Future Part 2. On the other side, on the left, this is the digital readout from the flux capacitor from the time computer and it shows two times the 26th of October 1985 and that's the day where Marty first gets into the time machine and though he actually travels back in time to November 5th 1955 this shows you I think it's January 28th 1958 which is not related to the Back to the Future, but it is related to Lego. That's the date that the first Lego bricks were patented. So that's a really nice touch by Lego to fiddle with that date to give us a bit of Lego history. So that's it for this review of the Lego Back to the Future DeLorean. I'm in two minds about the set, as you've heard throughout this review. I think they've got some great effects and some great techniques, and they have captured an awful lot of detail in a small space. It's a significantly wider car, uh, excluding the wheels, eight studs and most Lego vehicles are six studs and that's fine given the subject matter uh, but it's just a shame that I mean, this I, I think kind of just about works but this unfortunately doesn't I don't know how they could have get around, got around it if they also wanted to attach this plate to make it look like Lego Back to the Future Part 3 it's a real shame uh, but I still think it looks really cool I think you know I made it and I think it's readily identifiable as Back to the Future when people come and look at it, so I think that's really nice. It's got some great effects, some interesting techniques, and I think it really does show what you can do with just a handful of normal bricks without doing anything too crazy in terms of strange parts. So it's very creative, really nice to build, but ultimately it just feels not quite there, but I have no idea how to do it better. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, am I missing something? Do you think it's great? Do you hate it? Please do let me know. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to our channel because more videos are on the way. Thanks for watching.